It is Tuesday, which of course means it is time for me to answer the questions that you send in every single week on the YouTube comment section or over the forums, brennanplays.com forward slash forums. Guys, I did not watch Raw this week. It was the Christmas edition of Raw, and I've learned my lesson. I learned my lesson from last year. Avoid Christmas Raws. In fact, the last two years. Never watch a Christmas Raw, and I didn't, and from what it sounds like, it sounded like it, sound like it sucked. So, I'm pretty relieved I didn't watch it. I was tempted, and then I saw Hogan dressed up as Santa Claus and said, nope, that's it. I'm, I can't watch this. So, I didn't watch it. So let me know in the comment section down below if it was unbearable or if it was an okay show. Is there any part of the show that I should watch? Because I avoided the whole thing. But um, yeah, so I didn't watch Raw this week. But it's been a bit of a slow week in terms of wrestling. We are wor working our way towards the Raw Rumble. But we still have many, many topics to get into. So without further ado, here's our first question. And just on a quick note before we get into our first question, I just want to say Merry Christmas to all you guys out there. I think I'll probably put one more video up before Christmas. That'll be the next episode of Universe Mode. I was going to do that today, then I realized, realized, oh shit, it's Tuesday, i got to do this one. So, Universe Mode's coming up tomorrow, but that'll be probably out on Christmas Eve. Might do, might even do a video on Christmas Day, who knows. But uh, Merry Christmas to all you guys, so hope you all have a great day. So, the first one is from Bailey14. Do you think Ziggler has any chance of being the man in 2015? Is there any chance he wins the Rumble? And finally, would you be interested in a Ziggler versus Lesnar match at the main event of Mania? Well, this has been a, a really widely discussed topic in recent weeks well, from what I've been listening to anyways. Can Dolph Ziggler be the man? Is Ziggler a better choice than Roman Reigns or even Dean Ambrose? Honestly, right now, on paper, you would probably say... Yes, I mean Ziggler, he's got 10 years experience in the WWE, the fans know who he is, the fans know his struggle, the fans know his story. He's probably just as much over as he was when he won the world title, when he cashed in money in the bank, he had a good run there, so he's proven that he can be a champion. Obviously he did get injured and whatever, whatever, but he can prove that he can get over and he can be a credible champion. Is he at that stage right now? I think... He is very, very close. I mean, if he won the Royal Rumble, I honestly would say, okay, fair enough. You know, I think he could be a potential winner. He's a legitimate threat. You look at his past couple of months, sole survivor at the Survivor Series, Intercontinental Champion multiple times and holding it for quite some time as well. Um, some big victories, including the likes of um, Seth Rollins. Uh, who else did he beat? Kane, many times, probably. Uh, Mark Henry, you know, he's beaten some credible top heels. So he's had plenty of big victories, and in my opinion, I think he could be a legitimate contender for the Royal Rumble. Do I see him winning, though? I don't think so. I still think they're going to go with Roman Reigns. Is that the right choice? I, I don't know. I think Reigns isn't, isn't ready. But is anybody else ready, though? Is Dean Ambrose ready? Yeah, I don't know. I think, just don't think Ambrose is over enough to warrant that kind of push. Uh... Is Dolph Ziggler ready? I think Dolph Ziggler's ready, but will the crowd be behind him? Will the crowd support him? And can you see a Lesnar versus Ziggler match at Mania? You know, I think that match, Dolph Ziggler would get his ass kicked the whole entire match. Just imagine Dolph Ziggler selling to Brock Lesnar. That would be crazy. Dolph Ziggler would look like he's getting killed by Brock Lesnar, literally. So that would be pretty cool to see just on that alone. Honestly, I wouldn't have minded seeing them go with Dolph Ziggler versus Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble. You know, test the waters of Dolph Ziggler, somebody different, somebody who's not John Cena, someone different, and we can see how he goes. You know, and then, look, if he gets close, he almost beats Brock Lesnar, then you've got yourself a legitimate main event guy. You've made Dolph Ziggler, you've established that Dolph Ziggler is a top guy in the eyes of the fans. Obviously, he's an IC, he's the IC champion right now. But hey, if he was IC champ and he went up against Brock Lesnar, that would be huge for the IC championship belt, wouldn't it? But um, yeah, so probably won't happen. I, don't, I just still think they're going to go with Roman Reigns. I think that's probably the best choice right now. But um, it's a big discussion that I would like to have in future. And I think um, it's something to certainly think about. You know, is Dolph Ziggler ready? I would say yeah, man. I think Dolph Ziggler should be a main eventer. And hopefully they continue the push that they're currently doing with him and make him one. And keep him there. This next one comes from Jeremy Bastian. What do you think of Cesaro and Tyson Kidd being a tag team? Look, um, this is a tag team that's basically two guys that are just thrown together. Look, they're both great wrestlers. 
both suffer from not having a, much of a character, both suffer from no promo skills, so you put them together, you make them a workhorse tag team, it's another tag team to put in the division. Something to do for both these guys who are just lingering around in the mid-card, that's what they should really be doing for a lot of these mid-card guys, I mean, stop having guys job out for no reason, and, you know, stop having guys who are doing absolutely nothing, you know, put Zack Ryder in a tag team with somebody, you know, put R-Truth in a tag team with somebody, you know, these guys that can be used and have some kind of value, use them, you know, like, they just kind of put people off TV until the point where nobody gives a shit about them, and when they do come back, everyone's like, oh yeah, that guy, I haven't seen him for six months, why should I care, you, you know, you don't, so, Cesaro, he's had a, such a horrendous year, it's, you know, he went from being at the top to absolutely nothing in the space of six months. It's terrible to see. It's sad to see. Tyson Kidd, he went and uh, reinvented himself in NXT, and he's come back, and I think he's done a lot better. I think he's got a, an okay gimmick. It's not really much that can lead him, get him where, anywhere big. You know, I mean, he's the, you know in the shadow of his of his wife, which is you know never really going to make you a uh, very popular guy in, in in the eyes of the fans. But look. You know, I think putting these guys as a tag team, it's something to do and, you know, keeps the tag team division thriving because we, God knows we know we need more tag teams badly, so more tag teams the better. This next one is from 1999 Crow. Now that Adrian Neville has lost his championship and they have a new rival for Sami Zayn, do you think he will move up to the main roster soon? There's a lot of rumors that Sami Zayn, sorry, uh, Adrian Neville will be moving up to the main roster soon and it's probably Sami Zayn too. Honestly, I would keep Neville in NXT until after WrestleMania. I think he'll be one of the WrestleMania call-ups. But to be honest, don't be surprised if you see three guys from NXT in the Royal Rumble. I can see Adrian Neville being in the Royal Rumble. Similar to what they did to Rusev, and I think Bo Dallas as well. You know, I have a couple guys from NXT in the Royal Rumble, so probably expect to see Sami Zayn, Adrian Neville, and I don't know. But that's probably it. They... Both those guys I can see being in the Royal Rumble, just to introduce them to the fans. I know most people probably know who they are already, but um, just to give Adrian Neville and Sami Zayn just a, a start, and um, you know have Adrian Neville do a cool spot. Instead of Kofi Kingston doing something cool this year, make Adrian Neville do it. Make Adrian Neville do something cool to stay on the Rumble. That gives him his big moment, because Kofi Kingston, nobody gives a fuck about him. He's done. So give Adrian Neville that, that spot. And, you know, people go, oh, shit, look at this guy. This guy's from NXT. He just did this cool move to stay in the Rumble. You know, this guy could win it. You know, this guy, oh, what a performance. What a great performance. He eliminated three guys. He was in there for 15 minutes. This guy's impressive. I'm going to, I can't wait for him to get up, get the call up. You know, just something like that to introduce him to the fans. I think that could work really, really well. Another one from Bailey14, he wants a rant on why the hell Big Show can't lose a match clean versus Roman, now he loses the Reigns by countout. Well, they're not really making Roman Reigns look very strong by winning by countout, are they? I believe that happened on Raw, I, I heard about that result, and that's just typical Big Show. I don't know, I guess he's a 7 foot, 450 pound giant, he should be booked strongly, he should not be losing clean all the time. But the guy's 45 years old, he's done, you know, there's no value left in him, no, nobody cares about the big show, he's not over, well, he, he is to, agree, to, to a degree, but it's just because he's been around forever, I mean, they should be really focusing on making new talent, I mean, what they did with Eric Rowan, I already blasted that last week, but they should, that was just disgraceful, and now Roman Reigns, I think the reason why they, they had Reigns win by counter is just so they could continue the feud on. You know, if Reigns beats him in the first matchup, what's the point of continuing the feud? The feud's done. You know, Reigns won. You know, who cares anymore? So the reason why Reigns won by counter is simply so they can drag the feud out to the Royal Rumble. Will they have a match at the Royal Rumble? I don't think they will. I think it'll be a Royal Rumble rivalry where both guys will be in the Rumble at the same time and Roman Reigns will throw the big show out and, you know, get a really impressive last second moment, you know, you know, get that, get the one up on the big show, and maybe they'll have a match at, uh, Fastlane, WWE Fastlane, Jesus Christ, that's, that name still pisses me off, but yeah, they may, may drag it out that long, but I think this one will just be at a Raw Rumble situation, and maybe Reigns will beat him cleanly on the, the, the Raw before the Raw Rumble to make him look strong. This next question is from Tasteful Chain 4 what are your thoughts so far on the new and improved Fandango? Same shit, 
different look, different dance. It's the same exact crap. And Fandango's done already. Roman Reigns beat the shit out of him on SmackDown and speared him on Raw like last week. Fandango's done. You know, this whole new and improved Fandango, it's just exactly the same thing, just a different outfit, you know, and different theme music. He's done. You know, he had a two-week push. I think he won like one or two matches and, you know, now he's back to losing to everybody again. So Fandango, don't be surprised if he's released next year. I mean, I think he's done. I don't think there's any resurrecting him. You know, they could change his gimmick again, make him Johnny and Curtis, but, you know, I just think Van Dango just doesn't really offer all that much. I just think uh, his promos are uh, pretty bad. His in-ring work is, is okay. You know, he hasn't really done all that great of a match quite yet, to be honest. So, I just don't think he really adds that much value, and the WWE obviously don't want to push him, aren't really giving him that much of an opportunity. I mean, they did... In, in his original push, they were pushing him quite heavily, but now the fans don't give a shit about him. He's, to be honest, he's just done. I, I just can't see him being around for much longer. I, I honestly expect him to be jobbed out heavily and then released after WrestleMania with all the uh, roster cuts. This next question is from Oliver Griffin. What do you think of who The Undertaker will face at WrestleMania, and what do you think will exactly happen? Well, obviously, right now, Sting would be a favorite, but the other favorite and the rumored opponent for The Undertaker right now is Bray Wyatt. I personally would like to see Sting. I think it's a, it's a dream match. Everyone wants to see it. I don't think we really want to see... I think fans would ri rather see Sting and The Undertaker finally go at it rather than Sting and Triple H. I mean, that's the match we want. We want Sting and Undertaker. But look, if we can't have Sting and Undertaker, and I guess it's kind of fair. I mean, two old guys... It probably won't be that great of a match, but it just be will it just will be a spectacle, It'll just be a, a great moment for wrestling fans. Going, holy shit, Sting and Taker, same ring, same time, they're gonna go at it. It'd just be huge, man. It'd just be great to see. You know, I have a ten minute match at Mania. Fuck it, man. It'd be cool. It'd be cool. But hey, will Undertaker be at WrestleMania? I don't know. Will he be there? I hope so. I I, I don't like the way he went out last year. I think he deserves to do better. But if he goes up against Sting, he obviously will beat Sting. But if he goes up against Bray Wyatt, I want Bray Wyatt to win. Because why would The Undertaker beat Bray Wyatt? You know, that would just kill Bray Wyatt. And Bray Wyatt needs that kind of victory over the dead man. And I think those two would put on a good matchup, a good storyline anyways. You know, I think it would suit two very dark um, characters. And Bray Wyatt, you know, just a great heel right now and he's starting to get some steam some momentum back behind him again and it's tr trying to push him heavily for a rumored big matchup at Wrestlemania so it would make sense you know if it's the Undertaker then cool but um I would want to see Bray Wyatt win and uh, Undertaker get a proper send off I mean, one where he's not concussed and one where he actually knows where he is so but still I think I'd rather see Sting and Taker this is the wrestling fan of me just wants to see and wants to know what if what if Sting and Undertaker had a match at Wrestlemania this one is from the Joe Meister. Do you think the Lucha Dragons will be successful in the main roster? Let's be real. Any tag team that comes up from NXT or any tag team at all will probably be successful right now in this tag, de tag team division. There's legitimately about two or three decent tag teams. The rest are just an absolute joke. So um, the Ascension coming through, don't be surprised if they get the championships at the Royal Rumble or, I don't know, at WrestleMania. Don't be surprised if they get them very, very soon because... They're going to be getting a huge push, trust me. They'll get a massive push because there's nobody else to push in the tag division. I mean, you've got the Ustos, but we've already seen them hold the titles for a majority of this year. So I think I'm a little drained on the Usos, to be honest. I used to be a, a pretty big fan, but now I kind of am digging the whole Miz and Miz Dow kind of thing. So I'd be keep going with them but, and then maybe build up towards a WrestleMania match between the Miz and Miz Dow and have the Ascension knock them off at some point. But yeah, the Lucha, Lucha Dragons, they're going to come in, they'll be successful. I mean, I think Callisto, I think his name is, he's going to be the next Rey Mysterio. He's going to be huge, trust me. He'll be he'll be huge in the Mexican market. And Sin Cara, the new and improved Sin Cara, I don't think the Sin Cara character can go anywhere. I think they honestly should have changed the Sin Cara characters to something different, something cooler. But look, you know, I think it'll be a successful tag team, and I'm looking forward to seeing them come up to the main roster. Hopefully it's soon. Final question from today is coming from Best in Class Gaming. 
What is the hardest part of making W2K15 Universe Mode videos? Well, obviously, I just had a shit ton of errors on my recent Money in the Bank video, so... One of the hardest things of making 2K15 videos, well, videos in general, I guess is, I don't know, editing is pretty annoying, um, but really the toughest part for me is rendering and uploading. Just the time it takes to do those things, it just takes forever. Making the video itself is pretty simple. I mean, it probably takes me maybe an hour to put together a universe mode video that tops. Probably 30 minutes, let's be real. They're pretty easy to make. But um, it's just the whole rendering and uploading process which takes a long time, which is why the videos take so long to come out. And Money in the Bank had a shit ton of problems. I mean, rendering issues, uploading issues, uh, recording issues. So yeah, a lot of issues can come about and just that's just kind of how it goes. It's kind of just the natural way of the game, I suppose. But it's, you know, it all comes a part of it. So it's the full package, man. you you got to take the good with the bad. But uh, still... A lot of fun to do, and I highly recommend it if you want to get into it. That will do it for me today, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed today's Let's Talk Tuesdays episode. Of course, if you want to leave a question for next week's episode, make sure you do that in the comment section down below or at the forums at brennanplays.com forward slash forums. Hope you have a Merry Christmas. Hope you guys get everything you want from the big red man. And, um, yeah, stay safe, have fun, have a good holidays, and uh, I will see you all next Tuesday for more Let's Talk Tuesdays.